Okay, hi everybody, welcome. Uh, my name is Michelle. I will be doing the fake news workshop today. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm so happy to see you. Okay, we're gonna get started. So just so that you know, um, we are recording this. And um, if you have your, if we have your permission, you can have your camera on. If not, if you wanna turn off your camera, that's fine. Um, and you can keep your speakers off. And uh, yeah, again, just to keep your microphone off and you can use the chat to ask any questions. And we are about to begin, so let's start. Okay, so the objectives of this workshop, um, I'm not sure how much all of you know about fake news. So we're gonna talk about like the general, like what fake news is, who creates it, who publishes it, um, what is the bias? We're gonna talk about misinformation and disinformation and how that is related to fake news. Um, and also we're gonna talk about um, different things like the understanding how our role is in this news ecosystem. And we're gonna learn clues on how to evaluate news stories and see what really is fake and what's real. And we're gonna check your knowledge at the end. We're gonna do a little um, a test at the end to see how much you've learned. So I hope that you enjoy this and um, we're gonna start. So. We're going to start with a definition. Um, what fake? What is news? What is news in general? So I'm just going to read the definition. It's um, information about recent events deemed to be interesting, important, or unusual enough to be newsworthy. Um, okay, it's supposed to be gathered, verified, and structured in accordance with journalistic norms before being published in media ranging from newspapers to live blogs. So they're supposed to be like sort of. Um, they have to follow certain standards. Journalists have, are supposed to follow standards before they publish. That's what that's what news is supposed to be. Okay, so news is supposed to be a trustworthy source. Um, supposedly, if it's a news story, these are experts who are journalists who have looked at this. They looked at the quality. Um, they're trying to do a fair and accurate coverage. Um, so they, um, they try to maintain good news sources. They try to have a significant process to finding the information, trying to be accurate, trying to correct any errors. Um, they're supposed to be, um, like if there is any opinion or a conflict of interest or anything like that, they're supposed to let you know. It's supposed to be above board, basically. Um, so they're supposed to be educated in the ethics of journalism. And there's, I'm gonna show you the code of ethics in a second. So there actually is a code of ethics the journalists are supposed to follow. And their primary mission is to give out good information. So that's what it's, it's supposed to be like pure news. It's not supposed to be biased. It's not supposed to be um, fake or anything like It's supposed to be real true news. That's what the original definition of news is. And here's a code of ethics. So. There are professional journalists who go to school, to become journalists. They have a degree in journalism and they have to follow these ethics. I don't have the whole entire page up, but basically the idea is that there is a code that they're supposed to follow. Okay, and then they're supposed to follow these kind of things of quality of journals, like to make sure that what they're writing is accurate. If it's not correct, they should retract it or correct it or apologize for it. They should be not having emotion in what they're writing. It should be like calm. It should be like, here are the facts. Um, they should also have a balanced story. Like if there's contrary opinions, it should be like two sides of the issue. They should be able to present both sides of the issue. It shouldn't be biased. Um, they should try and follow the story no matter what the outcome is. And again, it should be fair and objection, objectable. Um, and they should be thorough and they should fact check. They should make sure what they are saying is right. They should make sure that the quotes that they have are correct um, and they should identify their sources. So that's the basic thing of journalism. Um, I wanna point out that professional journalists can make errors. They do make errors, but if they do make an error, they're expected to retract it. Um, and they're supposed to apologize for it too. Like sometimes you say, sorry, you know, I made a mistake. This is the right information. So that's what they're supposed to be doing. Okay. So um, now the question is, where do we get our news? 
So in the old days, you know, before social media, we had a newspaper, basically, we had a paper newspaper, and people would get it from the newspaper, which was usually written by quality journalists. Nowadays, things are on social media, people post things, people repost things. Um, there's also aggregate news like Google News or Apple News. So they they get feed, they get fed in like a bunch of news articles from different places and then they kind of send them out. Um, you still have newspapers. There's still the Wall Street Journal, there's still LA Times, there's still New York Times. So those still do exist. There are still um, op-eds or opinions or, or editorials. A lot of times there's like an opinion section in a newspaper. Um, we do get news broadcasts, which are on TV. Um, or on the internet, and we have a lot of talk radio. Talk radio, people think a lot of times when they're saying talk radio that, oh, this is news, this is the truth. A lot of times talk radio is biased. You just have to know that. Like um, a lot of times talk radio, they have a point of view that they're trying to get across. They're either like on the left or on the right politically and whatever their point is, they are, they're, they're kind of like focusing on that point. So it's not necessarily unbiased. So just think about where you're getting your source. Like, is it gonna be a biased source or is it gonna be unbiased? If it's social media, anybody can post it. You know, if it's from a newspaper, usually it's from hopefully a more credible source. Um, talk radio, usually biased. So those are the kind of different things that you can get it uh, from. And then, you know, do you read certain newspapers? Because that's also a thing too. We're gonna to go through that in a second. But like, even so it's a newspaper from a supposedly credible source, newspapers themselves are biased. And we'll go through that too. Okay, so news and democracy. Um, disinformation is eroding the trust in media. So um, we're gonna go through what disinformation is. Okay, so fake news. Let me do the definition right here. I'm gonna read it to you. Fake news refers to factually inaccurate information designed to appear like legitimate news. As a form of disinformation, fake news shared on social media is intentionally deceptive and aims to influence readers' beliefs or behaviors. In the 21st century, the term is used primarily to describe the internet and social media disinformation. So that's basically what it is. It's fake news is designed to look like real news and it's intentionally deceptive. I'm just repeating what I'm saying so you kind of understand what it is. It's intentionally done, but it looks real. And so in order to spot fake news, these are some really good things to do. You know, consider the source, who's writing it. Is it something that was posted on the internet? Is it something that was posted on social media? Who's the author? Check who the author is, you know, check their credentials. Is it a real journalist? Or is it somebody who's like on a talk show or like a talk show host or um, a radio show host? Um, when was it published? This is always really good to you, accuracy. You know, is this something that happened now or is this something that happened 10 years ago? Um, is it biased? You know, again, who's, who's saying it? Why are they saying it? What's the reason? Um, and then you can find supporting sources you know, are there other sources that are also saying the same thing as what this source is saying? Are there sources that are backing it up or are there sources that are saying it's not true? Um, so try and kind of read beyond it, you know, and then again, you can ask the experts. That's what librarians are here for. We're kind of hopefully your gatekeepers of, of giving you like good information. So please ask librarians, that's what we're here for. That's our job. Okay, so then how can the news be fake? This is something that, you know, you always want to kind of question, like it's supposed to be real, but is it? So, um, so there's websites containing certain suspicious information. So those are purposely fabricated to distort the news. They presented as, a, they present opinions as fact. So that's something that you need to look out for too. Is it a real fact? or is it an opinion that looks like a fact? Um, there's like conspiracy theories, there's unverified claims, there's propaganda, there's ones that promote racism, homophobia, et cetera, and then there's misleading headlines. So those are all different things that we can look for when we're looking for fake news. You know, a lot of it's very sensationalized too. 
Um, and that's what they're trying to get you on. Like they're trying to make it like, oh, this is really interesting. Look, you know, all this happened. So you read it and you think, oh, maybe this is true, but it really isn't. And they're trying to get it so that it's, it's interesting for you to read. Okay, so why is the term fake news problematic? Um, scholars have described it in three ways. It can imply a genre of, of a disinformation online. It can be used by critical political actors as a label to delegitimize news media. It can also be used to simp simply dismiss something that is a negative or false. So that's why, because fake news can be like completely false and people don't know that. So I have a, a little show, I have like a, a YouTube video that I'm gonna show you right here. So this is how fake news works. So let's watch the video. Wait, let me do, sorry, I need to do slideshow, there you go. Okay, here it is, here's a video. At the start of 2016 in a small town called Velas in Macedonia, an 18 year old high school student discovered that he could make more money than his parents by building fake news sites. To protect his identity, we'll call him Boris. And here's how he did it. He wrote tons of false articles about the U.S. election, most of them salacious. The articles were shared on Facebook, garnering tons of traffic. So much so that Boris's most popular website earned him $16,000 over the course of a few months. That's way higher than the average monthly salary in Macedonia, which is $371. So Boris dropped out of high school and he was not alone. In the final weeks of the election, there were more than 100 political websites registered to Bellis. The most popular stories were pro-Trump, but that's not because Boris and his fake news publishers liked the candidate. They just like the money. Trump supporters just happen to be more likely to share fake news. Researchers tracked 30 million shares of pro-Trump stories on Facebook in the months before the election. But why were companies advertising on fake news sites? They weren't directly. Those ads were placed by services like Google AdSense or AppNexus, which act as intermediaries between advertisers and small-time publishers like Boris. They negotiate how much ads cost and manage payments from advertisers to publishers. Those ads follow people wherever they go online. Remember when you recently searched for that onesie? Well, that search was tracked and matched with advertisers selling that product. So everywhere you go on the web, a onesie ad follows. Advertisers and these services create blacklists of sites they won't advertise against. But it's hard to keep up. So sometimes they pop up on fake news sites that haven't been discovered yet. While Boris and his friends were making money, fake news became one of the major scandals of the 2016 elections. Many wondered if sites like Boris's even helped Trump win. A joint study by NYU and Stanford University found that it may not have tipped the election as much as one would think. It found that one fake news story would need to be as persuasive as 36 TV commercials to swing a voter. Still, the backlash forced tech giants like Google and Facebook to do something. Facebook is now partnering with fact-checking organizations like Snopes and PolitiFact to flag articles that present deliberately misleading content. Google now cuts off AdSense revenue to sites with spoof domains like NewYorkTimesPolitics.com. But that's still flagging fake news after it's been published and shared. So tech companies like Moat propose combining algorithms with human insight to catch fake news before it spreads. Okay, I think that's a really good overview. Okay, this one, I really like this video too. This is um, how false news spreads. So let's go watch this one. There's a quote usually attributed to the writer Mark Twain that goes, a lie can travel halfway around the world while the truth is putting on its shoes. Funny thing about that, there's reason to doubt that Mark Twain ever said this at all, thus ironically proving the point. And today the quote, whoever said it, is truer than ever before. In previous decades, most media with global reach consisted of several major newspapers and networks which had the resources to gather information directly. Outlets like Reuters and the Associated Press 
that aggregate or re-report stories were relatively rare compared to today. The speed with which information spreads now has created the ideal conditions for a phenomenon known as circular reporting. This is when publication A publishes misinformation, publication B reprints it, and publication A then cites B as the source for the information. It's also considered a form of circular reporting when multiple publications report on the same initial piece of false information, which then appears to another author as having been verified by multiple sources. For instance, the 1998 publication of a single pseudoscientific paper arguing that routine vaccination of children causes autism inspired an entire anti-vaccination movement, despite the fact that the original paper has repeatedly been discredited by the scientific community. Deliberately unvaccinated children are now contracting contagious diseases that have been virtually eradicated in the United States, with some infections proving fatal. In a slightly less dire example, satirical articles that are formatted to resemble real ones can also be picked up by outlets not in on the joke. For example, a joke article in the reputable British Medical Journal entitled Energy Expenditure in Adolescents Playing New Generation Computer Games has been referenced in serious science publications over 400 times. User-generated content such as wikis are also a common contributor to circular reporting. As more writers come to rely on such pages for quick information, an unverified fact in a wiki page can make its way into a published article that may later be added as a citation for the very same wiki information, making it much harder to debunk. Recent advances in communication technology have had immeasurable benefits in breaking down the barriers between information and people. But our desire for quick answers may overpower the desire to be certain of their validity. And when this bias can be multiplied by billions of people around the world nearly instantaneously, more caution is in order. Avoiding sensationalist media, searching for criticisms of suspicious information, and tracing the original source of a report can help slow down a lie, giving the truth more time to put on its shoes. Okay, so um, we talked about fake news. I'm gonna go through the definition of the difference between misinformation and disinformation. A lot of times people get those two mixed up. One is done deliberately on purpose and the other one is done accidentally. So misinformation is typically um, falsehoods that are spread either purposely or accidentally. I'm gonna say they're more accidental. This information is more like, oh, I'm sorry, I, you know, I printed this wrong, I have the wrong facts. I think that's more misinformation. Whereas disinformation, on the other hand, is always misleading. And um, so I think that to me, that's the difference. Um, it's this disinformation is purposely done to deceive you. Whereas misinformation, it's most likely accidentally. And so fake news is disinformation, not misinformation, which means that fake news is purposely meant to deceive you. Okay, so let's go on. Okay, there are seven types of misinformation and disinformation. Um, I'm not gonna necessarily go through all of this, but basically there's fabricated content. So people put stuff up that's 100% false. They know it. That would be disinformation. There's manipulated content where it could be, they thought it was information that was genuine, but then they manipulated it to deceive. So that could probably fall under the misinformation part. There's imposter content. Um, where they're impersonating information, there's false content, uh, misleading information. So, um, and then there's like satire and parody. So these are the basic ones that we have that, you, or, that are either misinformation or disinformation. Okay, and the fake news can also be weaponized into other forms of misinformation. Like there's like clickbait, 
there's conspiracy theory, there's propaganda, there's satire, all those fall into the fake news area. Okay, social media, it plays a really big role in this. Um, social media platforms like Facebook, um, they rely, um, content can be relied on users with no significant third party filtering. So basically on Facebook, or any other social media, whether it's Twitter or whatever, people can just post whatever they want. And there's no third party checking. There's no record. There's no like journalist that's trained to, um, you know, to write about journalism that's, that's doing it. Like anybody can post anything. So you would have propaganda, you would have misinformation, you would have dis disinformation. All of that is posted on social media and people repost it on social media. Like they, they get their news, they could, they, quote, they quote, get their news from social media. So then they repost it on their own social media accounts. And this thing goes viral, whether or not it's true. You know, people don't necessarily check the source. Okay, so you wonder why is it set up this way? So basically it's gonna all come down to money. Um, social media platforms want you to, you know, to engage with their platforms to show as many ads as possible. So social media is set up like Facebook, they have all those ads on the side. So the more you're engaging with Facebook, the more you're sharing information, the more the ads come up. So again, it's, it's about making money. Um, so new sites, both credible and untrustworthy, are also funded by ads. So again, it's about making money. It, that's it's all the whole thing comes down to making money. So when you think about it, like if it's true or it's not true, that's not the main reason of it being posted. The main reason is to make money. So think about that. Um, and then the advertisers have limited control over where their ads are shown. So they don't even know where their ads are coming are going to be shown. Um, here. This one, it says that it, it oh, sorry, it says that a single domain netted approximately five hundred thousand dollars over a six month period. So basically, oh sorry, let me go back. Um, basically, again, it's all about the money. The reason all the fake news is because it generates money, and it, not just a little bit of money, but a lot of money, like five hundred thousand, a half a million dollars. It's a lot of money, so that's why it keeps going around. Um, okay, so this is something I wanted to also show you. Just because it's written in a credible, quote, credible newspaper, doesn't mean that they themselves are not um, on the right or the left or in the middle. So this is a chart of newspapers that everybody knows, you know, like CNN, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Fox News, um, you know, all of these are, are well-known newspapers, but they don't necessarily not have a bias. They're either on the right or the left or in the middle. So here's a chart of where they fall. So you might think like if you're, you know, going into CNN, you might think, oh, it's facts. CNN has all the facts. Yeah, but you have to think which way they're leaning. Are their facts biased? Or the same thing over here. You know, if you're going to Fox News, you think it's a fact, but is it a fact or is it a biased? You know, what are they trying to say? Okay, so how do you know who to trust? I think I missed this. Oh. Okay, yeah. Okay, so here is another chart. This is basically the same information. It's just a different way to look at it. So where they are on the chart. Here's a bias, here's a left, here's a right, here are the newspapers. So think about that next time you read a newspaper or an article from a newspaper, you know, where are they on one side of the fence or the other? Okay, here's a video. So you're doing research. How do you decide who to trust and which information to accept or leave behind? Let's take a look. You're probably already an authority on something. Your friends may go to you for advice and guidelines on how to do certain things, like 
calculus or how to make great chili. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're an expert on the subject or that everyone should trust you or your cooking, but it does mean that your social circle has come to recognize you as the one to go to for certain things. Your friends may love your chili, but you might enter it into a competition with professional cooks and find that you've got a lot to learn. The same kind of thing goes for your academic knowledge. You might be a knowledgeable and useful tutor to your peers, but try to apply for a job as a calculus professor and you'll find your way out of your element. That's because you're trying to function in a new and different community. Systems of authority, trust, and reliability can look different in a variety of groups. Figuring out who to trust also depends on your information need. If you're writing an in-depth research paper on action movies and evolving gender roles, you'll probably need to use library databases and investigate some scholarly articles written by experts on that topic. But if you're just trying to decide if you should spend a few bucks at a movie theater, you can read reviews online, potentially written by anyone. It doesn't have to be a professor of gender studies or film criticism. But even in these simple cases, you might decide that you trust one reviewer over another. Why is that? Is it because you already agreed with their point of view? Think carefully about why you decide to trust any information and don't take anything for granted. Be flexible and open to new evidence from a variety of voices, not just those that confirm your worldview. Since this I dig, it's pretty complicated and we don't want you to doubt everything all the time, or else you'd never get out of bed in the morning. Here's some ways to figure out if information is authoritative in the academic world. Here's a short list of tips, and no single question is enough to ask when you're examining information. Who is the author or creator of this information? And why is this person qualified to write on this topic? Is this information peer reviewed? This means that other experts had a chance to take a closer look and offer suggestions and approval before the article or book was published. Does the author offer evidence that supports what they're telling you? And is there other information out there that helps confirm this evidence? As you go through your academic career, you'll develop more expertise on a subject, and you may even be recognized as an authority one day. It's your responsibility to make sure that you're using the best possible information in an ethical way and connecting with your community and others in order to share your own knowledge. And that's how you inform your thinking. Okay, I think that's a really good video. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, so how do you decide what is real, what is not, what you actually want to share with somebody else and what you don't? So, um, you know, can take, back, take a step back, consider your reactions. Um, is it something that's like propaganda looking as it looks like something that like it's too fantastical to believe? Um, do you understand what you're seeing? Is it opinion or is it news? Is it responsible journalism? Those are questions to ask. Um, verify and fact check. Before you share something, make sure of the credibility. I think this is super important. Do reverse image source. Um, you know, if, if it's health information, look at the CDC or look at the WHO or look at something like that. Like if it's something on COVID, make sure that like some credible source has posted it or if not, check it with a, with a credible source. Because, um, you know, how are you going to know whether or not it's true? You have to actually look at the source and find out if the information is true. Um, reverse image, you do a, a search on Google to confirm the origins of the image. Okay, so any questions about that? Do you guys have any questions about anything as I'm going through? Because I haven't even asked questions. Are you guys okay? Okay, just let me know if you have any questions. Um, let's go to the next one. Okay, so um, helping students identify fake news with the five C's of critical consuming. Let's look at that. With digital tools, it is easier than ever to create, edit, and publish your work to the world. But there's a cost. It's also easier than ever to spread misinformation. And fake news has become a real issue in recent times. We see this with students. According to a Stanford study, only 25% of high school students were able to identify an accurate news story compared to a fake one. Students also had a hard time distinguishing between real and fake photographs, as well as authentic and staged videos. 
Researchers use the words bleak and dismaying to describe this, but it's not going away anytime soon. And that's a very real problem. So how do we fix it? Well, here's a five-step process that I've used with students. A word of caution, it's not perfect, and there are probably other models out there, but I thought I would share it just in case you might want to use it. We call it the five C's of critical consuming. Number one, context. Look at the context of the article. When was it written? Where does it come from? Have the events changed since then? Is there any new information that could change your perspective? Number two, credibility. Check the credibility of the source. Does the site have a reputation for journalistic integrity? Does the author cite credible sources? Is it satirical? Is it on the list of fake news sites? Is it actually an advertisement posing as a real news story? Number three, construction. Analyze the construction of the article. What is the bias? Are there any loaded words, any omissions, any propaganda techniques? Can you distinguish between the facts and the opinions? Or is it merely a bunch of speculation? Number four, corroboration. Corroborate the information with other credible news sources. Make sure it's not the only source making this claim. And if it is, there's a good chance it's not actually true. Number five, compare. Compare it to other news sources to get a different perspective. Find other credible sources from other areas of the ideological or political spectrum to provide nuance and get a bigger picture of what's actually going on. When we teach students media literacy and they learn how to consume critically, they learn how to think critically. And critical thinking citizens are good for democracy. And that, well, that's good for everyone. scary that people can't choose or decipher between fake news and real news like in that article i'm sorry in that video they were saying how many students are shown something whether it's like a picture or an article like what's real and what's not people have a really hard time figuring out what is real and what's not that's the whole purpose of this workshop to try and help you decide what what is true and what's not so um eight ways of critical thinkers know when a news story is unreliable the, I'm not going to necessarily go through all this, but here you can read it yourselves. Um, these are things to look for if you for you to decipher if it's real or if it's not real. And you know, and you use your logic. You know, um, take a look at this. Do real journalists write this way? You know, is this the opposite of news or is this really news? These are just things to think about. I'm just going to let you guys look at this for a minute. Um, and do you have any questions about this? I have a question about the yeah. last uh, clip. What? Uh, the what? The last one that you, the the video that you showed the last uh -huh. one before this. Oh, I missed the Zoom. Sorry. Okay. Um, after this, uh, can I ask you if you can repeat those five C critical? The one that the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I want uh, to just for later whenever you have a chance. Okay. I want to write it down. Yeah, I, I think I maybe um, I have to go through it again too and look at it. That's why I thought that was really good to have the five eight, five C's. Yeah, we can yeah. go through it again at the end. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Let's go through this. Okay. So I know there's so much information in here. It's really hard to digest all of it. And I'm sorry, I'm doing a lot at you. And that's why I'm doing a lot of videos too, because if I'm just talking the whole time, it's kind of a lot for you guys to, to get through. So I thought the videos will kind of help explain better. Than what you know than what I can do. Um, so basically here's here's continue on. Here's more things to think about for the news story. So it puts the burden on you to answer the questions. Can this really happen? And I think a lot of times I do this, you know, when I'm reading an article, at least that I mean at least I do. I don't know if you guys do this, but you like, is this true? Like, is this true what they're writing? Does this really happen? Um, you know, the, you always have those questions. There's just a lot of two sides of the issue and how do you know which side is true um okay and a lot of it is also like corruption you know like someone has an insidious plot a lot of propaganda let's go to the next one fake tweets 
Um, that's another thing we haven't really talked about too much, but they even have generators who um, that generate fake tweets. Okay, some more stuff, protest. If there's a protest, be aware. They're saying to be aware of loaded terms like riot and rebellion. Um, a lot of times they're not necessarily that, but they make it that to make it more sensationalized. So if things seem very sensationalized, that's something to look for. Um, let's see, we can look at through all the other things too. But I remember like when they were having, um, you know, like first it starts off as a demonstration um, and then it goes from a demonstration to like a riot. So they make it sensationalized. Okay, fake news edition. Oh, so when they're writing, look at what actually they're writing, like the style. If they start using like, you know, all caps, if they're using like Photoshop pictures, you know, things like that are red flags. Um, and also like the headlines, if they make the headlines very sensationalized, that's something else that kind of is like a red flag. Um, and then here it says, check your gut. You know, how does it make you feel? Does it seem like something that could be real or does it seem fake? I always, I mean, I personally always end up looking at stuff and then trying to do research about it later, trying to find out was that real, was that fake? That's just something about I, that I do. I think maybe because I'm a librarian, I just, I have that tendency to do that. Even when, when I'm reading something, I'm like, I try to check it out and say, like, is that true? Does that even make sense? Is it, or, you know, that's kind of what you're looking for. Is it a report that, you know, is it a reputable person that's reporting this? Who is the author? You know, are they a journalist or are they just somebody who's posting stuff? Um, okay, gender and politics. So how women are, are um, depicted, um, that kind of stuff. Power hungry. You know, I don't know, all this stuff about gender and stereotypes. Okay, Islamic, phobic. Okay, I'm not going to read up through, but these are just different things to look for. Get to the next one. Okay, I'm going to go back here. Okay, these, okay, here we go. This is what I want to do. Okay, so when you're looking at, um, an article, what can you do? So even when you're reading an article, you do have your own bias. So check your own biases. You know, you probably will have an opinion. You know, if you're right, if you're left politically, you have an opinion. So check your own biases. Um, it says minimize your electronic footprint, use guest windows. Okay, read outside your bubble. I think that's really important because if you're just reading, like if you are reading only CNN, let's say for example, that's one side of the politics. And so there's only one perspective. So if you balance it out with like Fox, for example, these are just examples, I don't have to say you do this, like the right and the left or whatever, if you balance it out, then you'll have like a more balanced version of what you're reading. So if you only read one thing, try and balance it out with like the, something else so that it's not just one news source. And then we have, um, there are ways to check your facts. So Snoops, PolitiFact, CheckFact.org. These are all fact checking places that you can go to check. So let me show you those. Okay, oops, sorry. Okay, so here they are. Um, Snoops, PolitiFact, Fact Checker. I click on one of these. This tells you pretty much, you know, dubious claim about ivermectin. Is that real? So this will, this will actually um, look at that because I know ivermectin has been something that's been in the news lately. You know, does it work? Does it not work? Um, so they're going to look into that. Does the unvaccinated pose a risk to the vaccine? That's another thing that's been in the news lately. You know, if you're not vaccinated, does that posing a risk to people who are vaccinated? So here are some answers. Here's another one about ivermectin. So if you have questions, uh, this is a great place to look because they've actually gone through and they've done the fact checking for you. Okay. Um, that one's a good one. Oops, let me show you. There's Snoops. This is another one. Um, you can search thousands of facts. You can do your own search. And then here's some articles. 
whatever about different things. Okay, and then PolitiFact. This is for um, if you're you know interested in politics. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Okay, so triangulate. What that means basically is check multiple sources and the original source. So that's what I was saying. Like if somebody posts something, you know, check it out. Did other people post it? Go to PolitiFact, go to, go to uh, factcheck.org. Did they also say what they're saying? Like if somebody's posting something about ivermectin, for example, you know, go check the source and check one of these sources to see if what they're saying is actually true. Um, here again, it says go to the source and know that there's between satire, propaganda, opinion, and clickbaiting. So that's another thing too, like, you know, what are you reading? Is it a propaganda piece? You should, you know, try and figure that out before you repost it. Um, again, read more about it. These are different ways. These are different um, websites to um, read more about it. Here's a Harvard guide how to spot fake news, what to look for, fact-checking site. This is kind of what we just went through. Here's fact-checking sites, you know, virtual visual verification, evaluate information. That's all that information right there. Here's another one. You know, 10 good ways to spot fake news. Oops, so I'm gonna go to the next page. Okay, so let's test what we've learned. Okay, I have two things here. Tell me if it's real or not and why not. Okay, if it's what it, what it is, why and why not if it's real. Okay, say the endangered Pacific Northwest tree octopus. Ah, maybe this link doesn't work anymore. Let's see. Uh oh, I lost my PowerPoint. Okay, you know what, we lost this page. Let me show you these. I don't know why this one didn't show up. Okay, this is something um, I wanted to show you. So Rutgers has teamed up with Facebook to create a free course on identifying and tackling manip sorry, manipulated media. So they have a free course. That's something here, that's the link for that, which you might be interested in. But this page here is really interesting. Okay, so these people, these are not real people. These are not even people at all. What this is, they're using artificial technology or artificial faces to create like this deep learning technology. So it's by a company called Generative Photos and they use it to create false identities. So these are not even people, which I think is like, so interesting. They look totally real, but they're not. So that's something to consider too when you're, you're looking at news. Are the people even real, you know? Okay. Um, so this is where we were. I think there was an other slide that we skipped to somewhere up here. Oh, this one, I don't think we went through this one. Let me just show you this one real fast. Um, my friend posted it and it's good enough for me. So that's exactly what people are doing. People are getting their, they're saying 68% of us get our news in social media. So that basically means their friend posted something on social media and then they kind of look at it and say, oh, this is news. I'm going to repost this. And social media is not always the gateway for news content. So kind of keep that in mind. OK. Uh, let me show you this. We did this, we did that. OK, this one didn't work. Let's see if this other one works. Do any of these links work? Okay, this leak worth. Okay, is this one a good website or a bad website? What do you want to look for? The source is Cornell. Source is Cornell. Mm 
Do you want to look? You can see when it was updated last. Let's see. So it's been since 1997. Here's the copyright. So it looks like it's updated. Do you see any red flags on this? I don't see a particular date in, in the very beginning when it was published. When what was published? When this was published. Um, I go way to the beginning where the title is because I don't even see where right there's here? the title. This is an article or a website? This is a website. Okay. So this one, you know, I had questions about it. Like it is Cornell. But when I was looking at it, like some of the stuff wasn't updated for a very long time. I'm trying to see if I can find one. Like here they have a CF summer. Let's see. This is 2019. So they have like a mix of like old stuff and new stuff. So if it's astronomy, I would think it, since it's a science, it should be really updated. You know, and I, that's why I have questions about this one. I mean, I think it's okay, but like, you know, it's like super old, some of the stuff. Like this is 2000, 2005. So if you're doing a, um, a research on astronomy, you'd want something that's more current, I think. You know, I don't know why they have this lady from 2005 or whatever. So that was my thought. I guess not bad, but I don't know how good it is either. Let's see if I can find one of some of these questions are like really old. Let's see. I don't know. So anyway, that's one. I don't know why this other one didn't work. Let me just see. Let me try see if I can find it. Okay, I think that's it. Oh, okay, it's, it doesn't work anymore. Okay, that one was a fake one anyway. So, sorry, I guess that link is gone. So we can't even do that one, but that was supposed to be a fake one. And this one was supposed to be kind of like a questionable one. Okay, let's go on. Um, so we do have a fake news. Um, I just did a live presentation, but there's also, we have a, a watch it on demand YouTube channel. So there is one from last year that Patty Sofas did. She's our other um, librarian. So if you want to watch the one that she did, this was from fall 2020. We do have this on demand. And we also have a fake news and disinformation lib guide, which is right here. And this has a whole bunch of information. Uh, Patty's the one who did this as well about all the sources she used and evaluating information, how to spot it. That's the, the picture I had, that's the graphic I had. And then what to look for and fact-checking sites, which are the ones that I just posted for you guys, and some organizations. That's that's the picture that I had. So some of the stuff is already in the stuff that I had in my presentation, but there's some additional information here. Okay, and um, if you need help, we are librarians. We are actually, the campus is open, the library is open from nine to six, Monday through Thursday. Um, is open to current SMC students, so you have to be currently enrolled, and you have to have approved vaccination status to enter the library. They're going to actually check you. You have to um, have it uploaded, and they're going to check you before you enter. But you can chat with us 24-7. You can use the Ask a Librarian button, which is right here, and you can always ask us questions. I'm on Tuesday to Thursday from 9 to 12, so if you're during those hours, you would get me. Um, the one thing I do want to say as librarians, we are sort of like the hopefully like the gatekeepers of information. So um, take advantage of us and our resources. Take advantage of the library resources we have in the library. We have all these databases, opposing viewpoints, academic search, um, master file, JSTOR, Newsstream, all of these are better sources than you would get off the internet or off of using social media. Um, if you want to use news, go to our US news stream. These are um, sort of like reputable newspapers versus like, you know, but written by journalists versus like social media. So use this news stream database. 
Um, as a student, you get these resources for free. You don't have to pay for them. It, once you leave Santa Monica College, you will not have access to these resources. So, you know, take advantage of them now. This one is all um, scholarly or academic journals, which means they're peer reviewed. So if you're looking for like peer reviewed articles, go to JSTOR. If you're looking for newspapers, go to US Newsstream. If you're looking for either a mix of articles that are popular or ones that are academic, go to academic search. You can get a mix of information there. Um, should I, I don't know if you guys know the difference between peer reviewed, scholarly, academic, and um, popular. So peer reviewed, scholarly, academic are all like in one category. Those, those names are interchangeable. And basically those are ones that scholars in the field have written something new and other people in the field have looked at it and said that it's something new. It's written on a higher level, like a, um, like a college level versus, and it'd be like JAMA, like Journal of Amer American Medical Magazine versus like People Magazine, which would be like popular. So just think about that source when you're doing your research. Do you want like the academic ones or do you want like the popular ones? And Opposing Viewpoints is a great place to, um, to use too because basically it shows you both sides of the issue. So it shows you like an, a bias, like an unbiased, balanced opinion of a topic. So whatever your topic is, it could be something current like coronavirus, but at least it will show you like two sides of the issue and not just one side, which I think is really important when you're writing a paper. So definitely use our databases, use our resources, use our librarians. Okay, those of you who want extra credit, there's your word, journalism. Okay, and then that's just information about sources I used. Okay, any questions? Oh, you want to go back to the C's. Let me go back to that. Okay. Let me go back to that part. Was it, which one was it? Was it Know You Trust? I, I forgot which one it was. 